Yeah, g'day, and welcome back to this old lathe channel. Now, long time viewers will know I've been working on modernizing this beautiful 125 CNC lathe from Shoblin. I've got all the main lathe stuff working, all the drives, everything's good. I haven't done a control module for it yet, so I'm still working on a keyboard sitting on top of the tailstock and a monitor stuck on the wall just sitting on top of the pneumatics. While you might think this is a crappy way of controlling a CNC machine, and it is, it's actually worse than that, because what I'm effectively doing is I'm training myself in bad habits. Like, for example, if I start a program here, and I'm scooting around with this mouse key, I don't have an easy access to do a rapid feed rate override. All I can do is move up to a button and slowly move up and down the feed rate buttons, maybe hit the pause button here. This is just a crash waiting to happen training yourself into a bad way of w interfacing with the machine. And so, it's time to make a control panel. Now doing a control panel is quite a big job. So I've been procrastinating for ages by doing a whole bunch of little, less meaningful jobs. But last week I was on a business trip and I came back with COVID. That put me on my backside for about a week and I figured might as well use that time lying around. Quite a while ago I did a video on my ideas for the interface module and its various buttons and controls and stuff. And I'm glad I did that because I got a lot of really good feedback, especially from guys who actually, you know, run CNC machines day in, day out. So I've gone back and reread all of those uh, comments again, and this is what I've come up with. So I'm going to have a module here for feed rate. The idea here being when you first run a program, you want your hand resting on the e-stop with a block start button, a pause button, and your feed rate control plus a stop button all under your fingertips, pretty much. This is my like rough jogging, so set your jog rate. There's buttons for either the fast jogging or slow jogging, and also to put it into jog modes. If you're in some other mode, you need to be in jog mode for any of this to work. And then a little joystick. This block is simple, it's just my coolants, flood and mist, and this is where I'll put my USB port, which does have a cover over it. And here, I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do completely. So a spindle speed override button, spindle start clockwise, anti-clockwise and off, then buttons for bias variator down, bias variator up, engage or disengage the back gear, tailstock engage, tailstock release, some sort of an automatic tool change, switch to the next tool button, and then I've got three spares which I'm not sure yet what I'm going to use those for. I haven't bothered putting any form of collet control up here on the panel because it's already a foot switch. So once I had all this stuff roughly laid out, it was time to spend hours and hours and hours over five days in CAD drawing up all the parts I need to get laser cut. Now the thing that took the most time was laying out all of these tabs to make all the sheet metal parts interlock and make the whole thing self-fixturing. With a lot of non 90 degree angles in here, uh, it was quite difficult for me to lay all that out. There may be some faster way of doing this, but I just did it all manually. It's more time in the CAD modeling, but it definitely pays off once you've got the parts and are ready to start welding. So actually to do this, I didn't start by doing the frame. I started by doing the panel layout and all of the support structure for buttons and stuff like that. And then once I had all that done, I worked backwards from that to make the frame work around it. Now I know the dimensions of my control panel, I need to work out how to mount it and where. I think I've shown this before, this is the control panel mount column which comes original with this machine. By the way, this computer is the brain of my CNC and it's going to go up into this head unit. There's kind of a bearing for here which is still welded onto the old Schaublin control head so let's go and chop that off. So this is the bit I need, pretty well welded in but that's what you have angle grinders for. Gonna need a bit of grinding cleanup before I throw it in the lathe to finish it off. I'm 
probably use a piece of square tubing just to bring the whole interface forward a bit. Some way glue it onto the back of the housing like that. There'll be some rotation to this so I can swing it backwards and forwards through a few degrees. That's probably quite a good distance out there. So what did my sister think a CNC machine sounds like? Hey. Beep beep. Boop boop. Yeah, I reckon that should be okay. It's quite high, but the whole lay that is up on blocks at the moment. I don't think I need a secondary hinge here. I think it's going to be fine if this just swings through a few degrees backwards and forwards as a whole unit. Need to chop off a bit of bar. Got a bit of sort of pipe or something here that I'll just chop off as well. Make sort of a hub for it so that it can swing around. Speaking of swinging, you have to do a gear swing on an aircraft if it's been stored for a long time. And one of my mates was involved with reactivating this Airbus that had been in storage. So this is just showing a gear swing, just making sure the whole system works. It's quite a bit of work, you've got to jack the whole aircraft up, put it into air mode with a bunch of circuit breakers and stuff, and then try it out. Now the day finally arrived for me to get the parts cut on the laser for my control panel. One of my mates, Jörg, who also owns a Schaublin 125, in fact one and a half of them, he's a member of a local makerspace which has this nice laser. So he generously offered to help me lay out all the parts and work the laser for me to cut everything out. And man, which reinforces Arthur C. Clarke's famous quote that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Ah, it's just amazing. It goes so fast, so precise. I mean, I've had laser parts cut for me before, but I've never actually been there and seen it in action. Wow, fantastic. A big thank you to Jörg for helping me out with that. It saves me a huge amount of time. Thanks. And yeah, the laser's enclosure was so large that there was space to put the tripod with the camera on it actually inside its housing to take a bit of this footage. Well, that was a very productive day out. Got a whole bunch of bits made. There's a few of them that might need a bit of a clean up. I think I'll throw the whole lot first in some vinegar just to take off any mill scale that might be on there. While they're soaking the vinegar, I'll take them out one by one and just clean up any slag that needs to be taken off. Now I'm gonna need a container large enough to put all the parts in the vinegar. And you know what? Our number one fan never finished his scooter trailer and it's been sitting in my corner and it looks like just the right size container. Although, there's a big split in the bottom of it. But that's nothing we can't solve with a bin liner. At 34 cents a litre, this has got to be just the right quality of vinegar for taking off mill scale. Hey, tonight the All Blacks play the Springboks for the final of the World Cup Rugby. Hope it's a good game, and I hope the All Blacks win. Well, those parts have all cleaned up really nicely, so next it's time to start tacking them up. But before I can do that, I'm going to need a bunch of sharp electrodes. So let's sharpen some. All right, before I start tacking up the real thing, I've got a pop outs from the laser cut parts. So let's just do a couple of test tech welds on them. Okay, so that was 60 amps, so let's just crank that up a bit. The next bit I'll try with 75 amps. Okay, so 75 amps has given me a slightly bigger world. Kind of wandered a bit that time. So then what does the backside look like? 
I can see a little bit of penetration there. Let's start fixturing this thing up. Kind of tempted to weld it in the order that I drew it, which would mean starting with the starting with this main face frame. Time for the left-handed tack. Man, I really love laser cut self-fixturing parts. This is awesome. Even if the walls are like 90 degrees because of the laser cutting, it's still way easier to build a part like this than with an angle grinder. Okay, I don't get it. I'm missing a piece. This piece across here. I don't remember seeing it at home. I did look in the car. It's not in the back of the car. I'm sure I put both of the pieces in the laser file, but hey, maybe I didn't. So this mount piece is gonna get a nice big reinforcing flange welded on the inside of it. I'll see what it feels like once it's once I've done that, but I may even put a little piece of tubing and some diagonal supports on there. I guess I'll see once it's all welded up whether it needs it. And it's going to be pretty rigid I'd say anyway. And it's not not exactly super heavy, but I guess we'll see. 
so I'll leave that off for now. And then this base sheet. This being quite an open angle, doesn't have much interlocking, so it's going to need filler to, f to weld through there. So I think I'll weld that before I put the base on. Well, I'm super happy with this progress. Still a lot more to go. Need to go back to the laser lab and remake that piece that's missing. A lot of wiring on all the switches and painting and all that stuff. Well, it's now future me. The All Blacks didn't win yesterday. That was a shame. But at least the mount arm is prepped and ready for welding. And I can start working on some of the button stuff too. So I'm really happy with how this is coming along so far. Come back next week and I should have the welding finished and make good progress on the buttons and wiring and stuff. Thanks a lot for watching.